The Pumpkin Giant, by Mary Wilkins Freeman, Part 2. Then Patroclus picked up an enormous young Plantagenet and threw it into the pumpkin giant's mouth. The giant choked and gasped, and choked and gasped, and finally tumbled down. Patroclus and Aeneas, while the giant was choking, had run to the house and locked themselves in. Then they looked out of the window, when they saw the giant tumble down and lie quite still, they knew he must be dead. Patroclus sharpened the carving knife on the kitchen stove, and they all went out into the potato field. They cautiously approached the giant, for fear he might be shamming, and might suddenly spring at them and Aeneas. But no, he did not move at all. He was quite dead. And, all taking turns, they hacked off his head with the carving knife. Then Aeneas held the pumpkin giant's head, and began playing with it. The king was notified of the death of the pumpkin giant, and was greatly rejoiced. But the king forgot to give the promised reward of knighthood to Patroclus. Patroclus felt rather hurt about it, and Daphne would have liked to be a lady, but Aeneas did not care in the least. He had the giant's head to play with, and that was reward enough for him. There was not a boy in the neighborhood, who did not envy him his possession of such a unique plaything. Aeneas played so much with the giant's head that finally, it got broken and scattered all over the field. Next spring, all over Patroclus's potato field grew running vines, and the giant's heads. There they were all over the field, hundreds of them. The people, who saw the yellow giant's heads making their appearance above the ground, believed that the rest of the giants were coming. There was one pumpkin giant before, said they, now there will be a whole army of them. If one pumpkin giant gave us the shakes so badly, what will a whole army of them do? But time passed by, and nothing more of the giants appeared above the surface of the potato field. People began to feel a little easier. Now Aeneas had an habit of putting things into his mouth and tasting it. He had almost eaten all food that could be found nearby, except the giant's heads. Night and day, he wondered what a giant's head could taste like, till finally one day when Patroclus was away, he stole out into the potato field, cut a bit out of one of the giant's heads and ate it. It tasted very sweet and nice. He liked it so much that he cut off another piece and ate that, then another and another, until he had eaten two-thirds of a giant's head. Then he thought it was about time for him to go in and tell his mother, in case he fell sick, he could take some medicine. Mother, said he, I have eaten two-thirds of a giant's head, and I guess you had better give me some medicine. Oh my precious son, cried Daphne, how could you? What shall we do? Then she sat down and wept. And Aeneas wept too, as loud as he possibly could. It did not seem possible to them that a boy could eat two-thirds of a giant's head, and survive it. Aeneas, expected every moment to see himself die. But he did not die. On the contrary he had never felt so well in his life. Finally, at sunset, Aeneas looked up and laughed. I am not going to die, said he. I never felt so well. You had better stop crying. And I am going out to get some more of that giant's head. I am hungry. Don't, cried his father and mother. But he went out and came back with a whole lot of giant's head in his arms. See here, father and mother, cried he. We'll all have some of this. It evidently is not poison. And it is good a great deal better than potatoes. Patroclus and Daphne hesitated, but they were hungry, too. Since the crop of giant's heads had sprung, they had been hungry most of the time, so they tasted. It is good, said Daphne, but I think it would be better cooked. So she put some in a kettle of water over the fire, and let it boil a while, and they all ate it. 
It was delicious. It tasted more like stewed pumpkin than anything else. In fact, it was stewed pumpkin. One morning, the king had been out hunting and happened to ride by the cottage of Patroclus with a train of his knights. Daphne was baking pies as usual, and the kitchen door and window were both open, so the delicious odor of the pies perfumed the whole air about the cottage. What is it smells so utterly lovely? exclaimed the king. He sent his page in to see. The housewife is baking giant's head pies, said the page, returning. What? thundered the king. Bring out one to me. So the page brought out a pie to him, and after all his knights had tasted, to be sure it was not poison. And the king had watched them sharply for a few moments to be sure they were not killed. He tasted too. I never tasted anything so altogether super fine, so utterly magnificent in my life, cried the king. Bring in the housewife? So Daphne came out trembling, and Patroclus and Aeneas also. Now tell me about these wonderful pies, and I will reward you. Then Patroclus fell on his knees and related the whole history of the giant's head pies from the beginning. The king actually blushed. And I forgot to knight you? Oh noble and brave man! Then the king leaned gracefully down from his saddle, and struck Patroclus with his jeweled sword and knighted him on the spot. The whole family went to live at the royal palace. The roses in the royal gardens were uprooted. And giants' heads are pumpkins, as they came to be called, were sown instead. All the royal parks also were turned into pumpkin fields. Patroclus and Daphne superintended the baking of the pumpkin pies, and Aeneas finally married the princess Ariadne Diana.